good way to start a discussion about merging images is to talk about logos. I never understood why anyone would resort to using public domain stock logos that look like these. Perhaps because they are free? What kind of message does that send to prospective customers and clients? Giant corporations started this trend toward abstract logos, but remember that in order to get logo recognition, those giant corporations only needed to put their sparse logos on millions of products that they were already selling us. Those giant corporations also have multi-million dollar advertising budgets. The truth is, there are only so many ways to combine squares, circles, triangles, and swirls before everything starts looking alike. It's a mathematical certainty. But even if one of those logos could be completely unique, what does it really say? It isn't memorable, nor does it represent any specific product or service. Consider this. In the final analysis, I have never been hired to create a stylized logo made up of geometric shapes. The people I work with know better. So what would a good logo look like? Let's create a hypothetical situation. The public relations director for a wildlife park contacts me for help creating a logo. He's not really sure what he wants, but he tells me the park has the usual animals found in a zoo, but it also has butterfly gardens and bird sanctuaries. And he needs to convey this in the logo. So where do I go from there? Let's use some image merging to put a few things together. For starters, when I think of a zoo, I can't help thinking right away about the big cats. Remember now, we want simple, so let's look at a panther. We have to fit our artwork into a logo which might ultimately be reduced in size when used. The stripes, spots, and manes of other big cats might disappear or add too much clutter to a small logo. Next, let's consider the birds and butterflies. We don't necessarily need both, so let's start by looking at the smallest and simplest, which are the butterflies. I would like a colorful butterfly, but as with the panther, I want to try and keep this simple. So here's an interesting specimen I found on the internet. It has just enough markings to make it attractive, but not so much color as to make it difficult to draw or to make it overpowering on a logo. Wow, do you see what I see here? With these two images side by side, I've come up with a really good idea already. Let's ditch the idea of using the entire panther and go just for his eyes. We'll draw up our own, of course, using the photo as a model. By using just the eyes, we'll simplify the image even more, while at the same time these eyes will become representative of a wider variety of animals. They all have eyes, after all. Now let's draw in our own version of the butterfly. We can easily use the entire butterfly here because of its small size and simple markings. Now we remove the reference images, leaving us with the drawings we just created. Can you see where this is going now? Now in the final step, we put these two images together to form a single image that could be used for the focal point of our logo for the wildlife park. Remember, this is only the first step in a hypothetical situation. The director of the park might reject the concept completely. That possibility comes with the turf. And the image still requires the addition of things like creative text and borders. But the object of this video is to demonstrate the creativity of merging our concepts and artwork to create original, unique, and purposeful art. Remember too, there's no need to limit this creativity to just logos. Creating a sample logo here merely served the purpose of the demonstration. This is Clarence. Happy cartooning and thanks for dropping in. Thank you.